lo que a mí me ha, más me ha puesto triste en la vida es, es cuando nosotros no teníamos cuando nosotros no teníamos casa donde vivir y cuando a mi hermanita la mataron The only thing I know uh, is that God said, if you stay on this side of the Jordan, I'm going to bless you. But if you cross over to the other side, I'm going to bless you even more. And to me, crossing the Jordan to the other side was coming down to Colombia. Medellin is an industrial city. It's the second largest city in Colombia. It's well known because of uh, its people, the paisas. And they are well known because of their hardworking people. But at the same time, they could be really violent. If you look back into the history of uh, Colombia, this is a country that has been in war for 45 years. So obviously when a country is in war, there is poverty. I believe that some of the poverty in Medellin is because of uh, families that are coming from the rural areas people that had lost everything because of the war conflict and they come to the city looking for a uh, hope, for a job, for, for anything. I believe there is hope, uh, that's why I'm here. But bringing hope to people is not just telling them good things uh, or preaching a good sermon which is uh, vital, but also you need to sometimes go the extra mile, uh, giving them a mattress, giving them some dignity, food, The name of the foundation is City of Refuge. I choose that name because uh, this is what I want for the people to feel here, like a refuge, a place of safety. We work in a place called El Pesebre, and it's where we also have a single man's home. There we feel like uh, between the single man's children and the children from the area, like uh, 20 children every day. We got to know Jasmine and her parents maybe three years ago, and they started coming to church. Then we went to visit them one day, and we were kind of shocked in the, in the conditions they were living in. The father, he has a problem with uh, drug addiction, and sometimes he cannot find a job. Uh, he's not constant. So because of that, they're suffering. They don't have uh, enough income to survive. In Jacqueline's case, she's always praying and trying the best she can her situation, but it's not easy. Yo me llamo Jasmine Eliana y tengo de años 12. Lo que a mí no me gusta de Medellín es la violencia que hay. Por mi casa hay veces matan a gente, pero es que aquí en Medellín mataron a mi hermanita, tenía 15 años, pero no sabemos quién la mató. Mucho mi hermana. Quisiera vivir en otra parte, pero me toca vivir acá. Ah, que no me gusta, que hay mucha gente que no se comprende con nosotros, que no nos comprenden nosotros tampoco a ellos. Hola, chicos. Hola, papi. Hola, Hola mami. Hola, manita. Yo duermo con Natalí y con ya, mi amor. Ya, mi amor, duerme Luis Guillermo. Mis padres duermen acá, aquí. La principal causa para venirnos para acá fue que fuimos desplazados de otro barrio. Yo la fui, fui clavando palitos hasta que hice lo que, lo que vemos acá. Cuatro pequeños y tres grandecitos. Se nos hace muy difícil en realidad tenerlos bien, darle la buena alimentación, se nos ha hasta desnutrido los niños. Y a veces, un, a veces uno como mamá le piden una cosa y uno se enoja, uno dice, Ay, pero yo a dónde le doy tal cosa, uno se desespera. Porque no hay carne, no hay leche, no hay buena alimentación para ellos. Entonces ese amiguito le dijo a mi mamá que por acá daban, había un restaurante y que se llamaba Ciudad Refugio y que acá nos podían dar comida. Entonces nosotros vinimos y aquí nos daban comida, nos colaboraban y veníamos a la iglesia. 
They were one of the first families to be chosen for the feeding program. Sometimes they don't have anything to eat, sometimes they eat once a day, sometimes they don't have anything to eat at night. The government may take away their children if they are younger than 18. It may happen. But I believe uh, 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 the story is not over with them. And Jasmine, you have seen her, she's a sweetheart. But as you speak to her, you're going to see the, the pain, you're going to see the hurts. But also, uh, she, she's a beautiful young girl when she smiles. And uh, hopefully, she will become a testimony for Jesus in the future. Because I think God has a plan for me. If I believe in God, I think yes. My hopes and my dreams for Jasmine es que ella termine sus estudios, sea profesional, porque ella es muy inteligente, que sea alguien grande en la vida. ¿Qué es lo que yo quiero ser? Yo quiero ser una modelo, pero... ¿Qué más? Si no soy eso, quiero ser dueña de, de una empresa. Yo me sé la canción de Dios. Jesucito hizo la luna para que alumbrara de noche. Él hizo las estrellitas, hizo en el mar pececitos, todo lo hizo Jesús. Sunset is not the safest area, and if you go like to the homeless area, especially to Health Street, uh, it is not safe. Uh, it's called Health Street because uh, that's where they buy and sell drugs. Uh, sometimes you will find 100, 200 people in just one street buying and selling drugs. Colombia has over 3 million displaced people. In Medellin, we have around 15,000 homeless people. We move all over the city. Sometimes the homeless people, they move all over, so we follow them. And every Friday night we do that. The teenagers and the children, they sniff glue. That's a way for them to feel better and also not to uh, have hunger pains and kind of avoiding reality. The glue is so cheap. But uh, it's so destructive at the same time. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cuántos años tienes? 18. He said he's 18, which I don't believe. I think he's younger. Um, you see the uh, glue bottle next to him? ¿Cuánto hace que estás en las calles? Todo el tiempo. ¿Pero de chiquitico o qué? ¿Vives aquí en este lugar? En la, en este, ¿Aquí duermes todas las noches? ¿O donde te coja la noche? Aquí. Sometimes what happens is the uh, uh, mothers, because of uh, uh, financial needs, they uh, live with the men, but the men doesn't like them. And, and the mothers, they say, well, either, you have to leave, sorry, because if, if you don't leave, then I lose the financial support. A mucha gente que te pueda estar mirando, ¿qué les gustaría, qué te gustaría decirles? Gente cristiana, gente que ama al Señor y que quiere ayudarnos. Okay. ¿Eh? I'm going to pray for him. I don't know if you want to... Uh, ven, Frey, vamos a orar por él. Y tú también, Gabriel, por favor. Señor mío, Padre, queremos pedirte por la vida de Luis Fernando, Señor, en esta noche y, y te queremos pedir, Padre, que hagas un milagro, Señor, en su vida, en su corazón 
Señor mi Dios, ha estado en la calle y tú conoces su historia y tú conoces su pasado, Padre. También conoces su futuro. Y Padre, lo ponemos en tus manos porque sabemos que le amas. Lo ponemos en tus manos porque tú eres el único que tiene respuestas. Lo ponemos en tus manos, Padre, porque tú tienes la última palabra para tu vida. Okay, this is the construction site where we're building the new foundation. Uh, this first floor is going to be uh, the homeless shelter, also the feeding program for the homeless. But also we're going to have the church service here on Sunday. Uh, it's not just for the homeless, but also for the neighborhood. And some people are coming to the church, even though they know it's a kind of a homeless church. Um, I'll show you. And this area of the first floor is, is going to be a bakery to your right and a mini market to your left. This mini market and the bakery is going to be run by the same population we're working with, the single moms and the homeless people. It's for them and by them. This is a crazy dream, but uh, God has been faithful and here it is. We started this building like eight months ago. It has not been easy. But we have seen every step of the way God uh, provided. What amazes me the most is that the homeless people who we serve, they're willing to come and work here in this place. And they have been working for more than six months, sometimes in groups of 10 to 15, uh, just for free, because they know this is going to be their home. So it has been a great blessing financially, but also as a motivation for us to, to continue working with them and blessing them, because they, they deserve a second chance. I dream about uh, being here with the people and seeing their faces, single moms, children, the homeless, and having a better place to, uh, to sleep and live, bringing some dignity and telling them that uh, Christ loves them in a concrete way. So we're going to have a perfect view, a nice place to pray over the city. Well, I consider myself a crazy dreamer, I would say. But uh, God, God showed me that uh, if you have dreams for people, if you have dreams to glorify His name, then it's not your dream, it's His dream. And God will bring it to pass.